it's because the fact that I've been reading suddenly since since chapter one came out that I'm just going to be optimistic on this one. So the, the whole situation is, you know, I've talked about my experience with the series in the past. Uh, I, I liked the first arc. I thought the first arc was good. And then around like uh, a third of the way into the second arc, I think it started to fall downhill once Meliodas got his powers back, which was one of so many power-ups he got at the time and still kept getting permanent power-ups, I might add. But around that time, then he like crushed Galen and then... It seemed like the Ten Commandments were just uh, domino affecting, you know, one after another at that point. But I, I liked part of the uh, this arc, you know, the, the whole part with Males to Rosa. I thought that uh, entire piece was really good. And there was the fact that it, it was... I, I felt like the Demon King uh, being the final boss was kind of dumb, the way that, like, how well Mel's Rosa fit into the, the series as a potential final villain. But it's the Demon King who... The only thing we knew about him throughout the series is he was just this big, powerful dude that cursed Meliodas and uh, uh, and Elizabeth, you know, will allied up with the Supreme Goddess. Which is like, okay, yeah, he could be a big deal, but all we've really gotten is that he's powerful. There's nothing really uh, else to his character uh, outside of that aspect. But the thing is, when he ended the way he was, it was at least a nice uh, character development moment for... Uh, Meliodas as well as other characters on top of you know you got you got some nice like synergy teamwork and just an all-around like even though it feels rushed it's still a nice way to end the series where you know you make all the characters relevant you have this kind of nice uh good like homely feeling to to kind of like send off the series but then it's like oh no that ending that we were thought we were gonna get was a fake out there's still a final boss that being the demon king after you know surviving taking over Zeldras and I want to believe that there's there there'd be no reason for uh and I think any writing standpoint to have the final villain who was built up over I mean over an arc I guess really but not really uh, I guess it was more like the, like 20 chapters prior uh but why would you have him defeated to bring him back to have him like quickly defeated again I think that this is all on purpose I I'd like to believe um but who knows at the moment? But right now, my stance, I'm going to tell you, like, the optimistic side of things. Uh, one second. I'm just, uh, trying to get the, do, like, correct description of, uh, of one thing before I go into my uh, little kind of, like, optimistic group. Because, like, by the end of the chapter, the, the, the Demon King, he's just, like, bleeding out. Like, he's, he just looks like he's getting his ass kicked. Meliodas hasn't even used any of his demon powers yet. You know, and the Demon King, it's like already got like a stretched out curse, and he's really trying. Whereas Meliodas seems to just be like, I haven't even used ten percent of my power, kind of situation. And that's it's annoying because it's not even like some big like just for the scale of it final battle right now. He's just getting his ass completely kicked, and that's it. So. The, the thing is, so I'm going to tell you what about this I'm going to look, I find from an optimistic standpoint. Uh, this is an optimistic standpoint of everything that's happening right now is on purpose to get, get you on a sense of false uh, safety. So the thing about it is right now, the Demon King, uh, you know, the, uh, Meliodas and him are, this being mentioned actually really kind of put on my radar and maybe I think first start to conclude to this uh, kind of theory is that they, they mentioned his power of the ruler. You know, it's not working right now. He's not strong enough to use it at the moment because he's not at full power. He's trying to slowly regain, like, his full status. Uh, maybe why he's not fighting is because he's waiting for it to get to full. He's not. He doesn't want to really expend energy. He's just trying right now to uh, put up a minimal effort to, to get it up because maybe he's got a plan. And this could be a double-edged plan, but double-edged both at Meliodas. Because imagine this. While he's pretty much just stalling in order to get his power up, but he's also letting himself get heavily damaged. And, you know, he hasn't used the ruler yet. We know what the ruler does. It reverses, so damage heals him and healing damages him. Same thing with, like, buffs uh, debuff and debuffs buff him. You know, it's just a it's reverse of the intention of the ability. But we know that before he uh, left that KB was created in as uh, Demon King Zeldris, there was both Cusack and Chandler's body who make up the original demon. Now, what if, all right, in the optimism mode, full tinfoil hat on, what if he's letting himself get beat up near the point of death right now? Well, so he could 
builds his magic back up to full power, and then use both the ruler, but also because Chandler and Cusack were there, what if he stole Crisis from them, took Crisis back, put it in his body? So imagine he's going to be, imagine he's at 2 HP, like he's at 2 HP right now out of 100 or something, and he uses Crisis. Okay, it does damage to him, but it makes him more powerful like the closer he is to death. That two, da that 2 HP turns into 1 HP, but because, you know, he's taking damage, well, then he activates the ruler, so the ruler instantly heals him to 1 HP, whereas uh, Crisis takes it away and then makes him more powerful, so he's continuously, like, taking away and then uh, regaining that 1 HP, but Crisis, all in the meantime, is powering himself up. He, he just kind of, like, this endless kind of like scale up that reason maybe why all the characters will have to team up they'll have to pretty much defeat them all in one shot to just to get them to zero uh i just think that's a, an interesting kind of concept because it would give him a very like both tactical but like like realistic villains kind of stance of like i could do this this is literally within my power two steps and all i have to do is just kind of get beaten up for a few minutes and then bam really cheap like damage heal loop and again, that'd be, that'd be a really good thing, because then any time he takes damage, heals up, Crisis takes the, the health away, and then converts it more into power. I think this is a uh, potential for uh, a really good, like, endgame, like, villain power. Because a lot of the time, there's always these facts, though, in uh, in a lot of shonens, when they get to, like, the final battle, like, just just to kind of, like, cap it off, the, the final villain is just absurdly more powerful than all the other characters. Not even, like, a, a scale, it's like, Okay, these first villains are a 1, this guy's a 3, uh, okay, this next guy's a 5, oh, this guy's an 8, and then it's like final villain is like a 45, something crazy like that, you know, it, and even if it's like shortened, because like, you gotta keep in mind, like, the way that the series was going, how much it was getting rushed, uh, I was keeping in mind towards, because anybody knows my channel, because I'm a big fan of fairy tale, and the last, like, six chapters got rushed so bad, I have my own theories of what went on, the reason why it got rushed, I'm gonna do a video on that eventually, but it's like, okay, what are we gonna, you're gonna condense, like, the big, super mega powerful character, Acnologia, into, you know, being defeated within six chapters, how is he gonna go down? He at least got a cool power-up, he got even stronger, he gained a bunch of new abilities, and just, like, even them defeating him was with a bunch of different variables, like, they made a strategy to make him weaker in order to defeat him, and all these other things evolved. He at least went down, like, really, like, still like holding his like level of power it, it was just like more of like getting outsmarted like tacticians you know into into defeat and uh with, with the demon king he just keeps getting beat up because like at least they had that kind of like layout with uh the defeat before he was um they were fighting him up with the spiritual and physical plane uh but at the same time he was at least looking impressive um like he was still like winning for the most part until the very end he you know beat all the sins and then fountain showed up and then they fought together or seemingly equal for a moment but then like the demon king started to like overtake him but then meliodas started to to lose but then the seven deadly sins all got put into his mind and you know they had a a good good rousing team moment and then meliodas was able to you know work up the power to defeat him and you had like a cool thing like that but it would make no sense to really just have the Demon King get beat the hell up and that'd be the, the way that the series ends while everyone else is having like cool endgame stuff battling a an Endura. It, it's gotta be something to do with this plan. Because it, he does look damaged, but at the end of the chapter, it, like his, his mark is like spreading and growing. Uh, which I kind of think is interesting because you can't tell like how much of that could be the mark, how much of it could be blood. And it's just this mixing together moment between like uh, the damage he's taken, but also the uh, the way that he's been uh, strategizing, seemingly at least. I mean, I'm hoping so, because, like, even with this fight still just kind of feeling rushed, but I think that's the point, again, as I've said throughout this video, where I think that he this is all part of uh, the Demon King's plan to get this all set up for, you know, some potential hyper damage heal loop. But also... It's had just good choreography scenes. I really like that part where he raises the, like, the big Hellgate sword. That looks really cool. And I'm hoping the series ends on a, on a good note. Like, I've, I've had to, like, give it some shit recently. But that's just because I've been upset with the recent stuff going on. Uh, a lot of my grief has been uh, stuff in this final arc. But it's, it's still not a point where a good ending can't be had. 
And it's still at a point where if the author wanted to make a sequel or spinoff or just a, you know, any, any series, whether it's directly continued or somewhere else in the Seven Deadly Sins world, but it's just, you know, it's a different country. It's still possible. I still want good things as a series, obviously. Uh, like any series, like even if I've got grief on them, I'd rather them be in a, a good spot than being angry. Like I was legitimately salty when uh, when they ruined Mel Starosa's character and just made him a good guy. Because I, I, he was such a, I was like a little crabby at the series before and then that part happened and I was so happy because it was such a cool plot twist. It was a really fitting villain within the series. And then he kind of just got like beaten like really quick by a, a stupid power from a character I don't like, like King. It was like legit frustrating because I'd rather the I'd rather the series be in a good place. I'd rather like the story and like the characters and and the flow of the uh, you know the whatever fandom I'm kind of reading into uh, being good. It, it's been kind of rough because the 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 Seven Deadly Sins fandom is definitely like at least from what I've seen like the vocal amount like the the amount that like especially like posts online they're not happy and it's not just like. Oh, well, this didn't happen exactly how I wanted. It's just like this layout of this, like, why would you bring these characters in and, like, have this extra secret boss space just to have them get trashed? Like, the Endure is getting beaten the hell up with uh, all these guys, like, grouping together. And now the Demon King is getting beaten up again. But I'm hoping that that's just going to be a, uh, just going to be, like, a setup. So when you get that, like, turnaround moment, that all is lost moment, and then the, you know, final good scenes those you know big like spirit lifting motivational like words of wisdom from the main characters and the cast that give them the strength to you know finish the fight that'll hopefully still be good i still want that to happen uh and i i'm hoping it stays at a point where the series gets successful because i'd like a sequel i really like I'm a, this video is getting a little long but i'm just gonna end it on i really like seeing all these uh big series now even if I'm not a huge fan of them, like for instance, I'm not a huge fan of Dragon Ball Super. Uh, I like the Super series has maybe way less interest in Dragon Ball, to be perfectly honest. But I was never a diehard Dragon Ball fan, and all the heavy Dragon Ball fans are very happy that Super exists. You know, they're still getting Dragon Ball content. They're not just rereading or rewatching old stuff. A at the end of the day, that's good. I'm glad the fandoms are doing good. Um, but it's really rough when your fandom is uh is unhappy and that's just where it seems like seven deadly sins is at the moment but as i said sequels and especially again for me like i talked about like fairy tale at the end of it was getting really rushed and then there was hope for some form of a continuation or spinoff maybe a movie or what and then i got 100 years quest and the series doesn't have to like crush charts i'm happy that it exists and I bet there's a bunch of Seven Deadly Sins fans out there that are just like, un even if they're unhappy with the current state, would like, you know, some form of sequel, continuation like that, where maybe they could, you know, work for more within the same universe with the same characters, but maybe work towards a better plot or a better resolution, something more of. Like, they could, again, they could easily have a continuation of Seven Deadly Sins, a sequel, and it doesn't have anything to do with the Seven Deadly Sins or Britannia. It takes place in another country, but maybe the, you know, Characters from the original series start to meld over, and then you have cool, like, uh, conjoined universe, which would be really fun. Uh, potential, who knows? We'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for the best for the series as it closes out, because it has been, like, what, over six years since I've been reading Seven Deadly Sins, and I, I, I still want it to at least end on a good note. And again, if, even if you're happy with this, whatever. This is, again, just my opinion. Tell me in the comment section below and what you think about all this. And uh, I really appreciate the thumbs up the video, but friend the like button and the subscribe button and check out my other videos. But I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed and I thank y'all for listening. Bye.